It's April of 1984 in what used to be Britain. It's now called Airstrip One. Airstrip One is part of Oceania, one of three totalitarian superstates that rule the world. How exciting! 39 year old Winston Smith is heading home from work. He works for the government, called the Party, at the Ministry of Truth. Sounds like something from Harry Potter, doesn't it? Ironically, the Ministry of Truth is in charge of distorting the truth by manipulating news, entertainment and education so that everyone supports the party. The Ministries of Truth, Peace, Love and Plenty are the four arms of government that control every detail of life in Airstrip One. As Winston moves up the flight of stairs to his flat, he sees the same huge poster on almost every wall. It shows the huge face of a man and the words, Big Brother is watching you. Big Brother is the head of the party. He and his secret team, the Thought Police, have eyes and ears everywhere. It's sort of like the Big Brother TV show, only much, much worse. Winston enters his flat and makes his way to the alcove, a small space in the wall of the room. Here, he is hidden from the telescreen, a television that acts as a camera and microphone. Winston nervously writes in his diary. Keeping a personal diary in Airstrip One is punishable by death, or at least 25 years in a forced labour camp. Sounds like a fun place to live, doesn't it? He thinks about the two minutes hate event. Every day, he and his colleagues watch a video about Emmanuel Goldstein and his Brotherhood. The Brotherhood is the counter-revolutionary group that wants to overthrow the party. However, towards the end, Winston meets the gaze of O'Brien, his superior, for a split second. He notices that O'Brien shares his feelings of hatred and disgust for the party. Could O'Brien be a member of the Brotherhood? What a scandal! Winston also thinks about his female colleague, Julia, who works at the Ministry of Truth. Winston is attracted to her, but also suspects her of being a secret member of the Thought Police. The next morning, Winston is not happy. He angrily thinks about how the party has distorted history and hidden the truth. And he helps them. At his workplace, the Ministry of Truth, his job is to alter articles or news items. At lunch, Winston and his colleague Syme discuss recent updates to the party's official language, Newspeak. Syme is working on the 11th edition of the Newspeak Dictionary and he's really excited about it. Newspeak simplifies the English language to narrow the range of thought so people will be too ignorant to rebel against the party. Slowly, Winston grows convinced that O'Brien is on his side. He begins to obsess over the corruption of the party. He even considers how the party could announce that two and two make five. And how will anyone say otherwise? What solid proof is there that two and two equal four? Clearly, nobody learns mathematics in Airstrip One. However, Winston concludes that freedom is the freedom to say that two plus two make four. The next day, Winston is wandering in a suburb where the proles live. Proles are non-party members, and they make up 85% of the population. Winston enters the shop where he bought his diary and buys a glass paperweight from the owner, Mr Charrington, marvelling at its beauty, almost like it belongs to another time, another place. As Winston leaves the shop, he sees a woman walking towards him. With shock, he realises it is Julia. Is she stalking him? Did she see him go into the store, which party members aren't allowed to enter? 
She must be a spy. He rushes home. Will the thought police come for him? He will surely be tortured and executed for thought crime, the offence of having thoughts that are unacceptable to the party. The party's slogan comes back to him like a death knell. War is peace. Freedom is slavery. Ignorance is strength. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on 1984, check out our summary of part two.